so today talking about uh, UI and specifically uh, React uh, and uh, a bit of background. Uh, I have been working, uh, so I live in working London, UK. Uh, I have been contracting, freelancing for the past uh, almost four years. Most uh, startups are really like the ones that are starting, that are trying to raise the first uh, round of funding. Uh, usually small teams, uh, very often I am the first one to, to arrive on the team. And then it's a very product uh, focus and, and mindset. Um, it doesn't matter the industry, if it's uh, financial, retail, uh, travel, they have all like similar needs. Um, they need something that we can scale easy. Um, they want to move really fast, but uh, at the same time they want to keep a, a kind of visual consistency between all the products. And they want to really use uh, the best uh, tech stack possible, so it's very easy to, to hire people, uh, to attract people to your company. Um, and some of the challenges uh, are the same as well. So they want to reuse the code as much as possible. They want to share the code between apps. Um, and, and it also happens they, want to, they, they have legacy code before. Uh, so which means different, uh, for example, bundle systems, or even like uh, uh, using like SaaS or less. Uh, so it's like three things I, I always have to, to keep in mind. Uh, and I have worked. Yeah, the white is nice. Uh, I have worked <laughs> with uh, uh, starting with the backbone uh, back in uh, I don't know 2000. Uh, 12, 2002, I guess, uh, and then moving to Ember.js was really nice, but it was too much, too much magic happening. Uh, Angular 2 is <laughs> uh, it's very enterprise focused, um, a lot of boilerplate, and uh, it's still like a, you know, all, all the three they, they have they are uh, templates, right? You can't do like you want, you get to, at some point where you kind of you hit a wall. And also using obsess um, and less using many conventions like you know, all, all the things we know, names, names and functional CSS. Um, I guess it's always trying to find uh, the best uh, simple, simple solution. Uh, so uh, don't confuse, confuse like simple doesn't mean less powerful, it doesn't mean easy. Uh, I really like this picture from uh, Pablo Picasso. Uh, we always remember him from the abstract, from the last one, right? But uh, we don't know like the whole process he went through. So I think to get to that point of simplicity and abstraction, you really need to understand uh, like you know the, the whole context. Uh, it's a lot of about failure. Try something and, and try different technologies as well. Um, and then for me, like uh, while I was using uh, those like technologies and, and libraries, frameworks, I am always thinking about uh, what is like UI, right? So we have it basically, let's say a button. We have like the markup, we have the styling, and uh, we may have the interaction. Um, and that's, for example, we have like a table. So we have our markup. We have the styling, and uh, we have the interaction that is uh, basically is JavaScript. Um, and then it's when I saw like React for the first time, kind of make it makes a lot of sense, right? Because um, basically you have the, the markup, the styling, and the interaction happening in the same place, in the same file. Um, and the more you use the React and uh, you, you have this component-driven mindset, the more things make, make sense. Um, and uh, then basically uh, React kind of brings this uh, component-driven approach. Uh, and uh, basically there are like beauty blocks like Lego. Um, I know like Facebook has something around uh, two, 
twin, uh, 22,000 components or something like that. Uh, and then they are very, um, very powerful, right? So usually they only receive props. Um, they don't use the state only to manage the UI. For example, if you have a toggle, you have it only off, that's it. Uh, and there is no side effect, so you can move your component around the application. It's, it should be work fine. Uh, that's, for example, one of the components uh, I have been working on. It's uh, like a profit calculator. Then you can see all the components, so you can see um, like there's a headline, there's a block, there's a text, there is a help button, there's a tooltip. Then you can you know like put all together, and that's very it's very nice and, and, and fast uh, approach. And again, it's only receiving props and then send them back uh, whatever you want. Uh, so in this case, every time you change the slide, then I send them back um, the, the, the value of the, the, yes, the, the amount. Uh, but that's, that's it. So you can publish this component in a private repo and it should work fine. Uh, so it's a, nice, uh, it's a very nice way to, to work. Um, and then understanding uh, this, uh, the needs of the, the, the companies I have been working on, uh, one of the first uh, approaches and strategy I try to um, to sell to the, 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 the stakeholders is okay. Let's create a React UI model that is going to empower all the, the apps. Right? Um, you can you can call. Uh, uh, comp uh, component uh, library, uh, library, pattern library, or um, doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's basically the idea. You have the React UI like in, the, in the bottom, and then whatever you build, build up in the top. So the, the let's say the, the website, the static blog, CRM, KPMI dashboards, whatever you build in top, they all going to choose this. Um, model, this library. And CSS, right, is... And every time I start to talk about CSS, things get really hot you know, in the room. Because there is a very different opinions, very different tastes. Uh, some people like CSS, some people don't like, like CSS models. A lot of people hate uh, inline styles. Uh, some people don't like templates literal, some people don't like to write uh, uh, styles in uh, JavaScript objects, right? And <coughs> I like it, this tweet from James Carroll, the, the, the whole thread is really good, but uh, it's basically saying the problem is starts to understand that there is a very different products and ways to use CSS, and then we need to understand, okay, what kind of product or what kind of problem are we trying to solve? And then we can start having this discussion which approach or methodology is the best. Um, and then that's basically um, people like from the CSS community that's more like into know CSS, they, they're going to say like, oh, JavaScript developers, they don't know CSS. Uh, and then they, they are now creating like this whole um, um, kind of solutions and then things to try to fix CSS. Uh, but no, I think we love CSS. I love CSS. I really like to write CSS. Um, and I love Flexbox. That's, for example, uh, one very simple thing you can do with Flexbox, right? So I have a keyboard input. Uh, and then uh, my input is just a Flex1. And then I have basically I have a field that's a wrapper, it's a flex. Then I have the keywords, it's the div, and then my, my input is just an input field. And then the input is flex1, and whatever I have in the keywords, they, it's going to automatically fit inside the container. So it's great, I mean, we don't, we don't need JavaScript, we don't need to do anything, so that's, that's already done. Uh, so yes, use the flexbox for layout. Um, you can't uh, go wrong with flexbox. So, coming back to CSS, I, I, I think it, the, the need is, uh, I, 
I like it, but also to um, write a component and I want things to be isolated, uh, encapsulated. I don't want a build setup. Uh, I don't want to have to set up a uh, web, web pack uh, or something else. Um, um, I, I, I would like to write like really CSS. And uh, also it's easy to distribute. So what I mean is if you are doing this library, this model, this React UI, and you are sharing to different apps, you don't have to worry about uh, adding the CSS. You just uh, send the JS. Uh, and then the, the stack I have been kind of using uh, for the past months, I guess, is React Jest inside of Google Points. Um, I like this tweet from uh, uh, friends uh, in a company, a uh, fintech company in London. He's saying, like, move fast and simplify things, and I think that kind of explains a lot how startups and products kind of should work. You want to move fast and you want to see, okay, what, what else can we simplify from, from, the, from this stack? Uh, so, we started components. I know a lot of people. They are kind of familiar with static components. Uh, that's how it looks like. Uh, it's inside the template uh, literal. Like I said, the, uh, there's a lot of people they don't like template literal. Uh, there's different solutions. You don't have to use static components. Uh, you can use a Fela or a Glamour. They, 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 they are like the, the JavaScript the objects. But that's pretty much the idea. So I have a box so I can use the FR. And then when I I, I can compose from this box, for example, the row, and then I can uh, change or over override uh, uh, what I want. Um, and that, that's kind of weird, like weird thing you see. It's basically, this is native from uh, JavaScript. It's just uh, called uh, it's a tag template literals. That's basically just uh, a way um, the, you can pass like a function to the, to the string. And then, then that's uh, you can do like uh, whatever you want to hear. Then you return that uh, that string. So it's not really kind of looks like magic, but it's it's, uh, it's kind of supported in native JavaScript uh, uh, ES6. Uh, May I ask how is the you know Intelli supported IDDs? Can can they you know? They mean auto they mean auto complete? Yes, it's good. So. The, basically, the, this one I use a visual code, um, and uh, visual codes I know Atom, Sublime, uh, they all have support. You, you can you, you get if you use like a styling int, uh, you can get uh, the all complete in the styling int, everything working. Um, and then one thing I, I added recently was um, I I worked before with a mutable JS. I think it's. Uh, it's my opinion, of course, but uh, I think it's a lot of work for the amount of benefit you get back. And uh, I think uh, Randa uh, brings this kind of functional components uh, to, to your um, stack and uh, is, is much more powerful. Um, basically, Randa is a library designed uh, for functional programming style. And you can compose the functions, and doesn't it takes the data, so there is no side effect, and uh, and also it's occurring uh, returns always occurring, and that's it's a uh, it's kind of a bit of changing your mindset because this is uh, declarative programming, so we come from imperative programming, which is our day by day, which is basically. Uh, logical operators, um, uh, if you have statements, and uh, uh, um, um, mathematical operations. So it's, it's basically you telling the computer exactly how the computer has to do. Um, while declarative programming is basically you tell the, the programmer what he wants to do, and then the programmer has to figure it out by, uh, by itself. So that's a very good example, like here, and we say, okay, types uh, we know like is an array of, uh, so we, but I still have to specify everything, and then in, in, in the other side, I can just say, 
okay, gets the values from the fields, and then the computer, the, the programmer is going to to um, to work out so what are the, the values. Um, so this kind of declarative thinking, um, for example, if you are building even like if it, if it, if it, if, it, if you have statements or like a simple like switch case, you can basically you can kind of convert that to uh, declarative uh, and use uh, uh, functional programming. Uh, not everything, for example, uh, if, you, if you want to do like a ternary uh, in, in, in JavaScript, in, it's, it's more work, it's not work. Uh, but uh, there is some cases, like sweet cases, you can get a really kind of compact code and uh, have a better uh, performance in your code. Um, so, I think it, then the question is what does this mean to components? Well, like, it means you can, you can bring it, this uh, functional style programming to the components. Uh, we, we can like, you know, uh, reinforce uh, uh, mutability and uh, can, again, there is no like, side effects uh, in the, inside in the components. Um, so, for example, this is a very common thing um, in, in uh, style of components where you, you receive like a props and then I can say, okay, get me the flex direction or, you know, the fall back to, to the, the thing you want. Um, and then with uh, this declarative mindset, you can just say, no, you get the properties of this, authorize you to this, like, you, you know, you start it out. Um, and then it goes back to animation. I usually I keep this out because I think animation itself is a is a subject for one one talk on. Um, but I wanted to add something. Um, I think it, you can do very powerful things with the Keep it, keep it things simple with CSS keyframes, right? Here I have just like a kind of goosey, they call it goosey effect, uh, that's basically keyframes. Uh, and then standard components um, give you these keyframes, that's it's basically like CSS, look whatever you want to hear. Um, and then um, you just uh, you say animation, that's the animation name. Um, Again, it's just CSS, so you can do like a lot of powerful st stuff with animation. Um, I use that in the past, like things like React Motion. I think it's <coughs> for the most kind of things we need uh, daily. It just feels like too much. Uh, and, and also, I think you you need to think about when you are hiding people, hiding developers. The more complexity you add to the app, the more it's hard it's going to be uh, to onboard uh, uh, new developers. Um, then again, unit testing, uh, it's, it's a very important part of the workflow. Um, I have been using Jest lately and uh, it's, it's really good now. I know they Jest uh, had a kind of bad legacy because it was pretty much abundant, abundant in Facebook. And then, but uh, they did like, a great job with uh, kind of rewrite, uh, rewriting um, the, the library. Uh, and uh, you can, you can there is this snapshot that's is very cool that kind of generates exactly the output, the HTML output. And then if something changes in the, in the HTML file, the test is going to fail. So you know exactly if it, a change it, you did uh, in a component, like in a button component that is used in a different parts of your app, you can see if it, that's a change you had any side effect in the rest of the application. <coughs> so the, the testing part, uh, um, sometimes when I work in starting a, a job, a new project, uh, we kind of do, we do a trade-off, right? Because they want to get MVP as quick as possible. So usually sometimes I start without tests. Um, 
but I'm making sure the QA workflow is really tight so I have like two or three people doing the code review, like checking. Um, it's still, there's things like only testing, unit tests are going to catch. Um, but then while it, we grow, um, we hire someone, then we start to add tests to the old components and then uh, to, from the new components, we always, okay, now any new feature, any new component it must have a unit test. Um, so I think a good practice, uh, I like the best practice in terms because this kind of keeps changing. Uh, it's basically as unit testing, uh, have ES linked. Um, so usually I'll, I'll, I'll use like a, I don't know, Airbnb one, but uh, I think it's too related. You can, uh, you can extend the Airbnb one and create your own loop on ES link. So that's uh, what uh, usually uh, companies are doing, and then you just change what you want, uh, you know. Um, there is a git pre-commit hook, so before people commit or push it to orange, you can run the tests locally, and then it fails, it just uh, doesn't happen. So, And there is automated code reviews, there is a few tools uh, around. Um, I, yes, I'm going to show one, one of the tools later. So the component structure look, looks kind of pretty much like this in the end. So I have a, like a tooltip folder, and then I have a, the index just works as an entry point. Um, then I have the JSX. Uh, the, yeah, there's, I mean, some people like, some people don't, but I like to keep it kind of, for me, JSX means, okay, there is an HTML uh, inside. Uh, and then the, I'm using storybook, uh, so there's the stories and, and animations, right? And uh, the, the, this is snapshots is generated automatically by Jest uh, the first time you run the test. Uh, so finally, tooling. Um, there is there's a few, there's like loads of good options. I have used it pretty much all like Travis, you know, Circle CI, uh, Jenkins. Um, uh, now I'm using the Code Ship. Um, code Climate is, is, is really good to do. It does automated review. Uh, so every time you push um, to Orange, Code Climate is going to run and going to come back with things like, hey, we found a similar code in four places. What do you want to do? Then you can just uh, say, okay, I want to fix this now. You know, validate the build, uh, and and then you, you can keep you know kind of a track of this, and uh, and uh, always generate a very nice report about uh, code coverage, uh, duplications uh, in the end of the week. So it's a, it's a very it's a very nice tool. Um, so wrap up um, is. This is not specifically for uh, technology, but I think it kind of applies to technology. Uh, Jason Friedis is uh, one of the founders of Basecamp. Uh, so everything those guys write, uh, uh, 37 signals is very good. Uh, so basically saying, uh, too, too many people they find in, in that place is stuck uh, or discussing which technology is best. Um, I think there is no way there is no right way. The right way is, is the one that solves the problem for you. Um, there is a new library trying to solve a specific problem that someone had, but you don't have all the problems they do. Uh, so you don't need to use all the tools. Uh, just uh, you know, bear in mind, uh, Facebook is trying to solve a very specific problem. They, they, uh, you know, they, they have not have run Facebook and uh, as big as Facebook. Uh, so yeah, just keep this in mind uh, when you are like choosing a new tool, um, and and also always make this question like, uh, what are the trade-offs we can do today in order to deliver tomorrow? And then of course we we're going to come back to this and, and make sure um, we check all the boxes. Um, and this for me is very important. Like keep it the DX is developer experience is. Um, I'm not sure who created this. I think 
I really like it. Uh, I hear the first time a few years back uh, at uh, like a React Europe. Uh, sorry, not a um, React conference in, in the US. But uh, anyway, it's. You know, you want to make sure that people go to work and, and whatever they, they're working. I work most of remote now. Uh, but, uh, you know, you want to, people to really enjoy. Um, and that's that's very important. If you're going to add a new tool that uh, is going to make your team uh, not very happy, don't do it, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Uh, Ramp.js for functional programming. Mm -hmm. 
and you've showed us, I think there was just one example of uh, the props or uh, like method where you basically provide some that hurts. <laughs> okay. uh, so where you provide the default value or the props value and are there some more examples from Randa that uh, you can like uh, introduce into the stuff components or yeah, yeah, that, that's 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 proper uh, prop or is one. There is only prop that you can use. Um, any 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 time it, you need uh, um, you need to kind of write a function inside, then you can you can move that outside the tool. Basically, what I'm asking is that this prop on method or function. I can write myself. I I just I, yeah, I yes. don't need random. Yes, yes. The, 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 the thing about random is like you said. You can, uh, for example, this is another example where you can compose like functions, right? So, uh, if you, if you want some properties, if you want to only get the properties in fallback to one thing, okay. But let's say if you want to get the properties uh, that is equal to something else, and then fallback to, to to the full value. Then it's where run is very powerful because you can do like this. So each one of these, like you know, like counts and equals, always they're all they're all like uh, functions. Um, and then for example, that's here as well. So basically, I'm uh, composing, um, I'm joining all um, objects with ends. Uh, then I'm doing a map, um, getting the uppercase uh, for all unique values uh, that match the the key house, you know. Um, and then that's where kind of hand where render gets that's really powerful. You can you can do like a lot of things. Uh, and there is like in the website and there is yeah there is some crazy example like things that probably for for, my, for me like takes. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm asking, because again, this example I can write in plain JavaScript, I don't need Ramda for that. Yes, well, there, there's, it's a good point, but the, the, you know, the library is very, uh, they, they, they use the, they try to use the native, um, native JavaScript. Yeah. Um, there is some, there's some functions, like map, um, it's a faster, they do like faster than, there's like benchmarks, they do faster than the native map or for each. Uh, and there is the curry, which is like this, um, and then you can pass um, like functions and, and, and go and go crazy. Uh, but yeah, you can of course you can write your own. Um, but that's yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing. It's a very good library. Um, there's a few articles like there is one article that's why Randa. So if you want to check it out on the website, then they can like explain better. Why, why they, they build the, the library. Okay. Sorry, any more questions? So you have one slide with the, the folder structure of your test, test folder? Oh, yes. Could you explain what, you, what those files uh, are there for? I mean... <laughs> yes, this one. The yeah, so, yeah, stories is a storybook. Um, basically, you just uh, um, can as a show. A story book, um, and basically you can they call like these stories, uh, but basically you can uh, <coughs> you can write different uh, uh, behaviors for your component, um, and you get uh, this is what you get in the browser, right? So you can here in the the right you have a lot, like all my components, and then you have a uh, variations of the components, right? So that's that's what uh, um, that dot stories is. It's just a, then the story book is going to 
look for all uh, files uh, with the stories and just generate that uh, um, that documentation documentation for you. So it's kind of style guide for you. Yeah, yeah. We don't use like publicly. We use internally. And uh, then if you because you can't really um, customize, right? It kind of looks like it is. You can't really change the style. Um, but uh, yeah, you can. You can. It could be also public. If um, Airbnb, they have the Airbnb did this reactive dates which is basically their um, component they use on the Airbnb web website. So it's the same, just historical. And you can, um, you can interact with the components. Uh, you can use the logger as well, so you see what the components you know, send back. Um, and also, if you hit on the question mark here, you see all like the, uh, the properties of the component. So it's a... It's a nice way to, to um, catalog your, your components. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I have another question regarding the jest. Yes. Uh, if I understand correctly, basically you you run the test, it kind of uh, get the snapshot for you, generates the snapshot, and then it just compares whether the the other run the test matches the snapshot, right? Yeah. And so what, how do you prevent uh, to generate, generating the, like the false snapshot the first time? Did you basically screw the code and you generate yeah, the wrong yeah, snapshot? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, if you, um, of course you want to make sure the component is working um, the first time, uh, but uh, the, the the snapshot is is basically uh, yeah I can imagine yeah. but to me it, it basically it, it's not a good idea to to trust the test that the snapshot will be right you know yeah, it's, I it's, like that I can expect something that will happen and I just expect it happens and if not there's a problem even in my written code right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, one thing nice of the for example the the, the snapshot. If I change uh, a style of a component, the test is going to fail because the, the class name is going to change, uh, right? Um, and that's that's pretty much just a, the just a telling you like, hey, something changed in your code and you have to do something, you know? Um, and of course, uh, um, the the snapshot is is only one one part of your unit test coding is not a uh, Kind of day to go, um, and and I, I like that the what I like the the snapshot is uh, we can usually we give it the final um, snapshot for for the designer and the UX and then the case they can check if the code is accessible enough so uh, quite nice because they are like in the repo you commit to the snapshots to the repo. So every time you do a code review, then we, we flag in the designer in the UX and say, hey guys, can check the output, you know, if you guys are happy, uh, if you, there is something you can make more accessible, we can make change. Any more questions? What about the types of JS? Oh yes, type is, is I'm not saying it's in uh, Flow or uh, TypeScript. Um, so yeah, that's just look like this. Um, the idea is always use the type. So if you're passing like a button team, then you, you want to use the type you just basically to get the out complete and making sure people don't add a value that is not uh, uh, valid. Uh, so you want to make sure that the guy is doing like you know button size and then if you get size then you can see um, get like the out complete uh, and not uh, and not pass like a string something you know something like this um, yeah it's, I think it's like it is a sugar really it's a, and then of course if you're using flow then yeah, it's a more like a strong type you know definition um, 
they want to they want to go there as well. Do you have any particular reason for not using Flow or TypeScript? No, no, not really. I use a TypeScript in, in the past. Uh, is in, uh, so for me, also the only good thing about Angular was TypeScript. Um, <laughs> and, and I want to I want to try that TypeScript with React um, very soon. Um, Flow we want to add to this project, so this project I mean, well, we, we we are hoping like release uh, the, the first version uh, next, <coughs> next month. Uh, so the trade the trade off we we did not okay let's keep Flow out. Um, there is uh, we, we we are using GraphQL as well, which is GraphQL, uh, and I know Flow doesn't play well with GraphQL, um, but yeah, I I think it's a uh, so it's, it's, it's better than, than nothing, to be honest, have a type, of, type of definition. So yeah, basically the, the, the folder is structured is just I'm trying to, even like animations, uh, just trying to break out and, and make sure the components, the JSX is not like a massive component. That's, that's the kind of downside of uh, style components, I mean, they tend to get you know, really long, and but you can always move about the components. Um, so you're just trying to create like a structure. Can you give me some specific example where the just a uh, snapshot testing? Uh, where where do you use it? For uh, what it goes for? Yeah, we use so we use in all components. Um, Change um, in the anything the HTML, the test is going to fail there. I'm going to say, hey, um, it's not matching the, the what we have here in the snapshot doesn't match with the change. And then you basically it's just telling you something happened, and then go and you update it there. But compared the to uh, when uh, tests were uh, run previously, or <coughs> what's the snapshot uh, it's comparing to? It's comparing, yes. Yeah, so with always doing pre the, the previews. Um, so the first time you run the components, uh, is going to create the snapshot and save. And then every time you run it, it's going to check with the with the last the last one. And and, and just does something nice that if we, if a test fails, uh, just is going to run that component first, and not not uh, like for last or whatever. So it's kind of nice. Uh, so all the components that fail, just uh, are uh, to run them uh, first in the next uh, next time. But sometimes uh, you change the components, so the it's. Uh, yes. Then then you then you update uh, you update the, the snapshots. Mm -hmm. the, the the point of the snapshot is not really. Uh, it won't prevent you to do something wrong. Uh, but it's going to highlight uh, a change. That's that's the point. Okay. Okay. Thank you.